Hi, I'm Bernardita Salato. I'm a tree fruit extension specialist at Washington State University. And here we are in a block of Skina over Gisela 12 that had and has Western eggs, little cherry disease. So this is a seven to eight year old orchard and the grower what he's doing here is replanting in sites where he used to have the disease. So first of all, we need to acknowledge that this is already a risk process because we do know that we have the infection in the surrounding. However, if we're gonna do it, it's important that we follow some steps and I'm gonna tell you what he did in this blog that it appears to be successful. So first of all, before they do the harvest, they go through every row and every tree and they monitor for the presence of little cherry fruit, which is the symptom of the little cherry disease, which is the very much easier way to detect this disease by looking to the fruit just prior to harvest because there's very distinctive difference between the ripened fruit and the unripened fruit that doesn't acquire the color but also doesn't acquire the size. Once they walk the block and they identify the trees that have the symptoms, they label the trees so they can come back later after harvest to manage those stump or those trees. So how they do this? First of all, it's important that when we are removing the trees in cherries, we need to promote that the tree continues to grow. Many times when we cut the tree, the stump in, in the base, right away, and we put the herbicide on top of the tree, sometimes the tree completely shut down. So it's important that we remain, and this is what the growers has been doing here, is that he keeps some of the branches and the shoots active so they can move water and nutrients and products from the top to the roots. So he can ensure that there's a movement or of herbicide from the place that you put it to the rest of the tree. So we have two goals with the application of the herbicide. The first one is to be able to kill as many parts of this living tree that has the infection as possible. So when we put the herbicide, we try to kill all these roots and you can see here how they are dry and they are completely dead. The second purpose of applying the herbicide in this trunk is because one of the ways that the virus or the phytoplasma can be transferred from one tree to the other is throughout the root connections, which we call the root grafting. So if there is root grafting between trees or neighboring trees, you know that there will be a transfer of the pathogen. And so the neighboring trees, it might not show symptoms, but it will be infected. So one way to identify if there is or not root grafting is by identifying the damage that the herbicide has in this tree where you apply it. In the neighboring trees, normally it will show up at the base of that tree with herbicide damage too. Now, the second step is to wait until the spring where they're gonna do the replanting. And one key factor of a tree, of an orchard that you are not removing completely is that you cannot do the fumigation or it's very hard to do. So one way, one strategy that these growers have done is that once they remove the whole tree, first of all, they try to remove as many roots as possible. So all the roots that are here, especially if they find that there's any root that is live, they take it out of that planting hole. But secondly, he brings soils from another area, which is a clean soil with no infection that they place in the ground prior, prior to the planting. With that, we not only prevent that, that there might be living roots that have the pathogen for the infection of the disease, but also we prevent other type of diseases that are common in replanting sites. So the key points in this process are, first of all, to monitor just prior to harvest is very important. Second is to apply the herbicide 
in a moment, in a stage of the tree, that there is movement. If you do it in the winter, for example, there won't be movement and, of course, the herbicide will not move from one tree to the other. And third one is to try to remove and replace that soil area where you had the infected trees.